Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roebuck, and you all know my co-host, Justin. I dodged kick a ginger day bird and uncle, save your brass kin. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all your Harley parts, accessories, and motor clothes you could ever need. Today, we're discussing a few biker stereotypes and the truth behind them. What's going on, guys? Pew, pew. I'm really sad that you didn't read the one that I wrote. <laughs> oh, no, no. See, I... Damn. <laughs> I do read these things. I know. That's why I put it there. <laughs> You'd be like, what, what's that movie, Bruce Almighty? <laughs> how <blah, blah>, <laughs> <laughs> uh, How y'all doing? I mean, I'm alive, I guess. Living the dream. You got a new tattoo. I did get a new tattoo. Let's, yeah. let's see it. Yeah. Is it scabby? Or oh, super scabby. It's... It hasn't quite reached the itchy stage yet, but... Does it hurt? No. Damn. <laughs> As he slaps him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're talking about biker stereotypes. They so, exist for a reason. Yes, yeah, stereotypes do exist for a reason. So let's start from the beginning. Number no, one. Number one Harley stereotype. Number one Harley stereotype. Okay, go ahead, Justin. Sportsters are girls' bikes. Accurate. <laughs> God. I, I feel like Ken is going to say accurate to every single one of these. <laughs> I'm just a Bradhead. It is true. I mean, yeah. that's what I started on. Yeah. Bunch of fucking girls. That's what here. Tyler's still on. Well, kind, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> that oil food money's not being put to good use. <laughs> right. So I wanted to buy a house. Here, oh. Here's the thing about Sportster and the, the stereotype that it's a girl's bike. I don't see a lot of women riding them. Well, there's Brad had one. Yeah. And then Tyler yeah. still has one. <laughs> so that's that's definitely two. <laughs> but no, to your point, no, I, I agree. So we, I mean, I, I don't either. But you know where the stereotype comes from, though, right? It's a fucking machismo thing. It, it, that, and it's a starter bike. Yeah, it's a starter bike. For, for a lot of people. It is. It's, it's, it's a starter bike. Like the A83, it's inexpensive. Yeah. It's for the size and for what it is, it's actually a high performing bike. Oh it's yeah, not bad. especially yeah. the twelve hundreds. And, yeah. and for a lot of people, it's the perfect bike for them. Yeah, but it's actually really bad for people who don't know how to ride a motorcycle because it's top heavy. It is top heavy, super top heavy. <laughs> I mean, look, I think Harley puts more time in consideration when they design the Sportsters. They have some really kick ass designs. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, just the tank and all the different configurations you can do on a Sportster. But I honestly see more women starting out on Dynas. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Because yep. they can keep up with everyone else on the highway. They have that sixth gear. Yeah. You do miss, you do miss that sixth gear on yeah. the Sportsters. But do we think that that comes from, I mean, let's face it, when women get into riding, chances are their boyfriend or husband comes or even their dad or uncle comes from riding. So they have a little bit more guidance as opposed to when guys go, they might be a little less apt to ask for help and they're going to go and just, you know, try to do their own research on a topic they fucking know nothing about and end up going for the cheapest, most affordable option because it's labeled as that starter bike. Well, that, hmm. yeah, let's, let's face it. It looks cool. It does look cool. That, that was classic, number one reason why I went for it. It's a classic Harley bike. Exactly. I remember you know. when I when I when my dad bought a Harley, I was like, Harleys are fucking stupid. I hate Harleys. And I went to a dealership, and out of the whole sales floor, the only one I liked was that eight eighty three. There's an iron like, eight eighty three. Yeah, the yeah. iron. When they started doing the actual blacked out stuff on it, mm-hmm. actually, I think I was drawn to the forty eight. But I did my research and found out that the forty eight was you know, eh. but that Sportster small retro mm-hmm. old school badass looking bike that's what i was drawn to yeah if you go and type in the google custom sportster oh jesus thousands oh. upon thousands millions of very unique looking bikes i think it's the 
not only is it the most unique, it's also the most versatile. You can take a Sportster, drop it to the fucking ground, put some big ass apes on it, and it looks decent. Yep. You can take a Sportster, jack it up, put a big fairing on it, club style, it looks good. You can throw bags on it, put beefier suspension, big seat, it looks good. Take it off roading. Take it off roading. Yep. Turn it into a tracker. Turn it into a cafe racer. Yeah, it's versatile. It's, as oh yeah. Fuck. And the aftermarket for it is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. The the options for the Sportster are quite endless i think that is it's even more versatile than the dyna because i don't i don't see a a dyna tracker you don't see dyna trackers you don't see dyna cafe racers but you could you could well sure you could but i I don't think you're the dyna and sports you turn the road king into a freaking cafe racer if you wanted to yeah there's a kit for it yeah yeah Yeah, my (laughs) my father from your uh, dad dad, yeah yeah nine thousand dollars and he'll do it for you yeah so i (laughs) i would say the sportster is probably the best starter bike for harley davidson if you are uh, i don't know a girl is that no, what you're trying to say no <laughs> oh, definitely not yeah totally for a girl no so tracy her first bike was a dyna yeah she had a street bob but would it have been a, her first bike if you didn't know you or another biker she had that well her husband had a road king at the time mm-hmm. but she picked out that bike like she did all the research. She went up there, I think, without him, and actually test rode it. Loved it. She liked the mini apes and all that shit that came on that bike. The Sportster was four or five thousand dollars cheaper, but she knew that it didn't. It didn't have the extra gear. It didn't have yeah. the six speed, and it wasn't really her style. She liked to sit lower in the frame than what you get on the Sportsters. It's it's a completely different ride. Yeah, completely yeah. different. I mean, picking up your iron and picking up my bike, it was almost the same feel. Dude, like picking up the sports next to the Dyna, the Dyna felt 100 pounds lighter. Yeah. It's actually, what, 120 About pounds heavier? Around there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the stereotype doesn't really exist. It, it's not accurate. It's definitely it's not, not accurate. accurate. It, no. The stereotype's there. Yeah, it is a machismo not. bullshit stereotype. The only no. guy, the only people you see saying that are fucking machismo assholes. Or, Let's face it. It's or guys you're talking shit or, yeah. to or, other guys. Yeah. yeah. That's or, where you exactly. hear it. Yeah. And that's where that machismo comes in. You know? Yeah. But yeah, and, and I think that also, I think dealers push them onto girls just because. Well, I think you dealers know, will push it to anyone they do don't think we'll feel <laughs> can afford a soft tail yeah. yeah or bigger i mean that I could mean, be fair yeah that was definitely a factor when i bought mine it was literally yeah. the only bike i could afford at the time <laughs> yeah it's great for those just graduating from college they have a little extra coin they just got their first adult job yeah and they can afford Fucking something spot on, yeah yeah that, it's perfect for that and it gets them into the sport yeah it's funny because I, 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 of course, still get tons of comments on my Sportster videos. And mm-hmm. this guy's like, well, you're 6'2", two, two, at the time I was like 280. He's that like, well, you're 6'2", 280, and you bought a Sportster. What a fucking idiot. I'm like, yeah, you were right, but that's the only fucking bike I could afford. So. Yeah. And All right. Now, and now look at me. Yeah. Fucking Goddamn two, geezer glide. 30 or something. <laughs> <laughs> and you're oh. still 6'2". It's crazy. Well, you haven't gotten right? shorter or taller? I, you would think I'd get taller because, you know, the way <sighs> yeah. gravity works. And, yeah. Well, no, that'd actually shrink you. No, but no. he lost all that weight. Oh, it's let it allowed him to yeah. go. Okay, Correct. I see. Yeah. It's fucking science. Yeah. M one minus M two. You know, yeah, divided Carry by the seven. God, fucking anyway, uneducated <laughs> idiots, right? Here. Yeah, I don't have all that fancy book learning. No, you need to watch more documentaries. All right, stereotype number two: Harley riders don't wear helmets. Accurate. Accurate. I feel like <laughs> this really depends on location. I think it depends on age. Uh, that's what I was going to say. That as well. Age. Demographic does play a huge factor. But for example, like when I was in Iowa, I saw probably 50 bikes. I think I saw one or two helmets. And that was across all really? makes and models. Yeah, dude, they don't. I I saw like literally two helmets the entire time I was there. So I, th- I figured like up there it would be just the opposite because of the weather. I think it's I think it is related to the weather because since they only have, you know, a month and a half to ride, they want to take advantage of it. So so I was thinking that they would wear helmets so that they could ride more, but you're saying because of the weather they don't they can't ride as much, they're like, Fuck it, I want to feel the wind in my face. Yeah. All right. So if they're gonna be riding they want that full riding experience. Yeah. So to the age and demographic thing, I was younger, I didn't like riding a helmet or yeah. riding my motorcycle with a helmet. I hated it. But then 
I got into the hog chapter and started doing the road captain thing. You had to wear a helmet mm-hmm. because that's how you mounted your communications equipment. And what yep. communications did you have? I had a CB. CB. Damn. Old fuck. I loved it. I, I Rubber duggy. <laughs> okay, we're going to go off on a little tangent here. I really wish we had pushed a talk on our Senna's or yeah. on any Bluetooth. I just wish the Senna's would work. Well, then I wouldn't have to talk to Tracy. <laughs> so I could just say something and then turn her off and she couldn't say nothing well, to me. No, just push a talk so it's not always picking up. Always on. Yeah. Because yeah. we get so much static and I think that's what it's from. You know, probably we would say eight of us with headsets, but let's face it, we've never gotten fucking no. eight. To we could do three up. is about freaking max. <laughs> yeah. So three of us, but you always have the road. You also you have my music playing because I jam out. Got yep. Fucking hustle and his fucking stupid five music. finger death punch to the whole time. Yes, <laughs> yes. But so, but yeah, I I didn't like wearing a helmet. But then honestly, when I got married, I actually really started wearing a helmet more. Yeah. Because I. You know, when you're young, you don't really give a shit. You're invincible. But when you actually start having responsibilities and stupid shit like that. Mm, and stop. to the complete opposite end, the reason my dad doesn't wear a helmet. He is wants he's to like, die. He's like, I'm fucking no, he's, 63 years old. He's content with his life. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's lived long enough. He's, well, his, his logic behind it is if I go down with a helmet, I'm going to get really fucked up regardless. I'm going to get a shit ton of road rash. I'm going to be breaking bones. Just, just put me out. So... <laughs> Whatever gets my inheritance quicker. I mean, that's great. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. Fuck. <laughs> now you got, you got to take out your mom, too. Well, that's, I mean, she usually rides with she him. She rides with him and doesn't wear a helmet. So, and she's only like 85 it's pounds, so she's Two fucked. for one there. But <laughs> maybe we take the stereotype a little bit further. Not that they don't wear helmets, but they wear stupid helmets. I think that one's more true than they don't wear helmets. Because they wear half, half helmets. Or half helmets, novelty helmets. Novelty helmets. Novelty helmets. Half helmets? Yeah, skid they do work. Fucking stupid backwards hat looking bullshit. I, God. I'm going to get you one for Fuck Christmas. you, dude. I'll take a shit and leave it on your doorstep. I'm going to have it engraved with the Mike and Bird logo on it. <laughs> you couldn't engrave that. It would crack. It's so fucking thin. I'm just, <laughs> oh, it's DOT. Acid, bullshit. Acid edge. No, no, it is. At, at the uh, IMS. They all had DOT stickers on them. Fuck that. Um, Which I'll is those. nothing. If anyone needs a DOT sticker, that. you know, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll cut, you a, I'll cut you a dot sticker for your helmet. <laughs> but, but yeah, half helmets are stupid. Stupid. They're, they're bottom of the barrel for your safety. They, well, I mean. Safety. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what they're going to do is keep your skull intact when you hit the ground. Yeah. But let's face it. A helmet doesn't just protect your skull when you go down. While you're riding... A helmet should be protecting your face, your eyes, your mouth, your nose. Those important things that help yeah. you live. It was like 20% of, you know, motorcycle crash-related injuries end up with maxillofacial injuries to oh, your mouth God. and nose. To where you smash your handlebars or depending on what bike you're riding, you know, your fairing. Mm-hmm. And then you smash the car or the ground, yep. depending yeah. on what you hit. When I hit you, my helmet hit my handlebars. You know, when you hit me, my helmet hit my handlebar. I believe it. So <laughs> actually, hit the windshield. Yeah, I caught yeah. like edge of like phone mount. But just imagine windscreen. if you'd have been wearing a half helmet and you hit your windshield, I probably wouldn't have said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> it was I an mean, accident, bro. <laughs> no, it's no big deal. You'd be like, "Fucking tap out, <laughs> pussy!" <laughs> Th- that that pistol may have come out <laughs> <laughs> as you're bleeding profusely. Yeah. yeah. So, I would say the stereotype is accurate with some caveats yeah but i think to the extent that harley riders or bikers not wearing helmets i think nowadays if you look at our generation more of us wear helmets absolutely and we're not wearing bullshit half helmets we're wearing full face helmets yep and spending several hundred dollars to get them it's definitely more it's definitely less common for someone to show up like when someone shows up to our group ride without a helmet it's they are the one yeah Yeah, it's It's super weird weird. they are the one maybe two if it's a big group and and i'll I'll go ahead and say i'm I'm, usually i i i I stereotype them and think they're riding dirty anyways yeah so (laughs) you know just saying (laughs) so to that point though talking about generation all of us run cameras on our bikes and both of y'all have on your helmet i haven't fitted one on my helmet yet but Mm -hmm. it's going so i think that that too plays a part in it that's why i went full face 
I mean, I had the half shell with my camera mounted upside down. It was so mean, awesome. Yep. It worked. <laughs> so great. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> it worked. It worked well. I haven't mounted my camera to my new helmet. No. The one I got from you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I really like, you know, my my front yeah. vinyl. I don't want to side cover mount. It. Yeah, or do a, a side mount. mount. Yeah. That's really kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Just because it's kind of a pain in the ass to get the camera right fucking there. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you don't go chin bar, you can be off yeah. and it's okay. It was on purpose. Well, I'm not yeah. I'm not moto vlogging, so Yeah, you're just I'm, a extra camera. Yeah. <laughs> dash cam. Dash cam on your helmet. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. All right. Stereotype number three, Ken. Oh, the Dyna Bro. <laughs> okay. Help me <laughs> understand this one. Well, I actually have an entire video coming out about the Dynabro. So. Oh, yeah? yeah? Oh, yeah. I did a <laughs> oh, shameless plug. I love it. I did, I did the Dynabro and the Bagger Bro. It's so funny because I did the Bagger Bro. I, I actually wrote out a script for this video. And I put on, it's funny because I put on Alicia's half helmet, which didn't fit my head. So it was sitting on top, which just made it look even funnier because it looked like those stupid bullshit skull cap helmets. <laughs> and I put on my uh, my safety glasses, the ones that kind of wrap around, you know, like the like the police style you know, the shooting glasses looking. <laughs> oh, okay. And then I just wore my regular Harley jacket because it's ugly as fuck. And, One with uh, your wings on it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all, yeah. And then uh, it's funny because I started reading the script and halfway through I realized I had put like a huge southern accent on it. So I had to go back and reshoot <laughs> the first half of the video <laughs> with the southern accent. So I'll read you my uh, my opening line. I, I still have it somewhat memorized. Um if you're into to lightweight, well-performing bikes with zero storage, this ain't the video for you. Move along, pussy. <laughs> I said, this is for you, Mr. Blue Collar Man, who just financed a $25,000 bike with a 12.4% interest rate because, God damn it, you're an American. You deserve an American-made Harley-Davidson. <laughs> And then the whole video just kind of plays off of. I feel like I should have opened a Bud Light just then, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. But anyways, going back to the original. Well, let's stereotype. let's just stick to the Bagger Bro. That's that's Since on our stereotype. Yeah, yeah, that was number four. Is the is the Bagger Bro? Um, I would say it's pretty fucking accurate. More accurate than not. Okay. I mean, in this area, that's going to vary quite a bit. But your once again non-wearing helmet buys everything Harley Davidson. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything. Uh, Blair's his music. Oh, God damn it. So you're, you're like writing this for me, <laughs> well, other than I, the helmet piece. The, the, Di- the Bagger Bro was very closely to you. The Dyna Bro was, of course, very closely to me. But, yeah. What do you, what do you guys think? To I a mean, degree, yeah. I think it's yeah. accurate. I mean, think of all the times that we, we roll up to Cowboys. The, how many? Anyone that's there. How, how is, much Harley gear do you have? I have a lot. Way yeah, too much. Is. <laughs> yeah, way too much. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, I definitely have a lot of Harley gear. But I do, the one thing they make well is clothing. Other than their t-shirts, their t-shirts are garbage. They shrink after the first fucking wash. But yeah. I, I like their button-down shirts and I love their hats. Their hats are dope. I, yeah, I got Their hats can hats. survive scraping across the highway. Yeah. <laughs> it's a proven fact. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would say it's 95% accurate because you have the bagger bros that fit that category, but then you have the bagger bros that are all about, let's take the heaviest Harley and make it a super performance motorcycle. I wouldn't call those bagger bros. I would call those performance bagger bros. Yeah. That's a different subcategory. (laughs) Or like, and they are very, that's a very closely related to Dyna bros. I was going to say, I was, those are, hey, my dog goes, those are, (laughs) Studio pups. The, the performance bagger bro is definitely more of a Dyna bro because they 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 want to do it, but you know I got a fucking bagger, so I'm gonna make it perform like a fucking Dyna. Yeah. Oh, uh, here's. Or they'll a, buy like the shortened bags so they can hit the turns better mm-hmm. and pop them wheelies. Uh, there was one number two on my list was uh, rev the shit out of your bike. Uh, you didn't buy a uh, American V twin and spend thirteen hundred dollars on your screaming eagle exhaust to put around the parking lot. Is this for Dyna Bros? No, this is for Bagger Bros. Oh, okay. Uh, parking lots and stoplights are ideal areas to exercise your acoustic privileges. Yeah. <laughs> Accurate. And then uh, play your music as loud as possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, only wave to other Harleys. Oh, oh see, I don't I, fit that category. You don't, but your Bagger Bros do. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's Harley Bros <laughs> in yeah, general. I, yeah, there's so fifth m- category the the Harley Bro. Yeah, there's so many people that that actually give a shit what other people are riding. Oh, yo, oh, yeah. That's the most annoying fucking thing on earth. I agree. Um, yeah. But I do fall into a lot of the bagger bro category for sure. Oh yeah, and I own that. One of my my favorite ones on <laughs> here was go to every rally, which I know you don't fall into, but the people that we make fun of wait that, wait wait no <laughs> no rewind go back before i moved to charlotte before <laughs> tracy and i got kicked out of our hog chapter that's right he did tell us about <laughs> we, we we went to a lot of the rally now we went to the hog rallies because we did the motorcycle games you were bagger bro 10 years ago yeah no helmet went to every rally did you remember did you, you remember his throwback pick did you see it with oh, the hair yeah. The the and the you, shirt. Did you, did you have frosted tips at one point? I don't know. You I were like definitely like, styling your like hair. Guy Fieri on a street glide. And you, you definitely had <laughs> oh. like your affliction shirt or some no, shit. No, no, like that, that was actually a Harley shirt. <laughs> oh, well, same difference. I'm on the black bike and I had just my riding glasses that's on. That's what it was. With the, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's actually a uh that was a Harley Davidson tie dye shirt. Of course it was. <laughs> but anyways, back to the rallies. It said uh why why spend the weekend putting miles on your bike when you can spend fifty to hundred dollars going to rallies where you'll walk around spending uh, eight dollars on beers, browsing tents filled with American flag accessories, get back whips, and of course patches. Yeah, all the patches, <laughs> all the patches, all the patches. All the patches. Damn, I should put patches on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah i I would say I have left some of the bagger bro ways in my past You're, you've moved on to harley enthusiast yeah oh, okay yeah i would say i'm i actually fall out of the biker category i agree nowadays because uh, i actually just want to go fucking ride yeah. i don't i don't care if someone thinks i'm a badass biker because i really don't fucking care what anyone thinks so where do you what do y'all think i fit into all this mm. you do have a chain wallet and i really enjoy my chain wallet and you ha- but you have a leather vest that has no patches on it. Mm-hmm. And that may be because he doesn't have anyone to sew them on because Faith hasn't started using the sewing machine. Faith, if you're listening, get on that. Man, she'll, well, you know, she'll never listen. I was about to say, you act like yeah. our women that listen to this podcast. Tracy does. Really? Yeah. Well, on accident sometimes, right? No, no. She actually, she, she waits till we get like four or five done and then she'll go through and listen to those. Mm. She'll, she'll binge listen when she's yep. folding linens. One out of three. Yeah. We're still not even close to passing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but I don't know. I think you're more on the Harley enthusiast. Oh, I don't know. I, th- I would say you're a bagger enthusiast because oh. you you can appreciate other motorcycles as well. Oh, I love bikes. Yeah. yeah. I just can't fit on them very well. Yeah. Well. Comfort issues. Yeah, I, I definitely fall into that issue as well. I would definitely ride them, but not own them to ride them. Yeah. But Agreed. I, I, I think all of us, well, I didn't, I can't speak for y'all. I, I can speak for me. I used to actually care. I wanted that persona. I, you know, I'm a badass biker, fuck the world. But going through MCs and living that life turned me away from being a biker altogether. I just couldn't stand it. I feel like that's kind of the tipping point is you either fall into that life for life or you fall back into, I just like bikes. I don't want yeah. everything else that comes along with exactly. all that nonsense. I, I definitely used to want to live the biker life. You know, mm-hmm. I always, you know, always thought that I would, you know, get a motorcycle and join an MC. Mm-hmm. And then I lived my life through the military. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> fuck you if you think you're going to tell me what to do. Yeah. Okay. So we went over... Bagger Bros. Let's go back to back Dino to Dino Bros. Bros. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just kind of—I don't want to give away my whole video, but uh, Simpson helmet. Okay. Vans and tall socks. Uh, usually dicky shorts. <laughs> Fucking a. Um, gloves have to be a bright color, very thin, not protective. Uh, if they've got a little, you know, lightning bolt or something on the finger, the mm-hmm. middle finger, that's that's a plus. Uh, Dixon flannels. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do enjoy my dicks and flannels. Uh, talking shit online. Um, the Dyna is the best bike to ever have graced the roads. Um, let's see. Uh, make sure that you park your bike with the wheel facing to the right. The wrong way. Yeah, the, the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, Only if you listen to Motor Cops <laughs> on YouTube. Um, 
ride like an asshole, uh, always skid to a stop, <laughs> jump whatever obstacle you can you can find in the road. Uh, the laws were not meant for Dyna Bros. And uh, most importantly, off the bike, you'll need to learn two specific questions. Uh, hey, bro, what fairing is that? And uh, sup, bro, Accurate. what bar are those? Accurate. And then, of course, getting to the bike, T-bars. Uh, some can get away with high risers and a clamp, but the one piece is uh, essential. 12 inches minimum. Got to get those knuckles up. Uh, you got to l- get a, a seat because the Dyna is the most powerful bike ever. Mm. You got to lock that ass in. High performance. Uh, high two, performance seat. Two into one exhaust. Has to be a two into one exhaust. Anything else is bullshit. Uh, suspension at least 13 inches. If you got a fender gap, you're in the elites. Um, <laughs> paint is, is yeah, it can kind of go either way. I said this is kind of where the, the Dyna Bro has, has some freedom because you can keep it black. That always works. You can wrap it like that pussy on YouTube did. Or you can spend some serious coin on a panel paint job. Uh, swing arm decal is a must. Oh, you yeah. have to let everyone know what you're into, whether it's, you know, black bikes matter or my favorite, the RIP Donna, which you can get at the link in description. And then of course the fairing got to have the fairing. It's all about the fairing, all about the fairing. Yeah. Oh, and I feel like the, uh, the gauntlet handguards are really kind of tying into that now. So really though, I saw those on performance baggers before I saw them on Dinah's. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Huh. Anything uh, that came out of Spade of Four Choppers, they all have the handguards. So, I don't know. No. I I feel like, I still feel like that's a Dyna thing. If it has fuck you on them, oh, it's yeah. definitely a Dyna yeah. thing. Or, or, move, di- or move over. Move over, Dyna life. Dyna life, yeah. Yeah. So, so Cal. Oh, yeah. The whole thing about the Dyna, and, and take this for what it is, I think that's the poor man's performance bagger. Because, mm. and and it's the kids that graduated from the sportsters. They went up one model family, and now they think they're the Billy Badass of the world. Oh, yeah, I can see that. And they want to be cool, but they still ride a fucking Dyna. I have to disagree. I think it's, <laughs> of course, I'm going to fucking disagree <laughs> with that. I see no, it bro, more no. as... <laughs> I don't see it as a poor man's performance bagger. I see performance bagger as a poor man who can't afford two bikes. So they're forcing the bike to do two different things. I I would say the performance bagger bro is trying to do something that the bike wasn't meant to do. Which is what the dinos are doing too. Yeah. Essentially. But the guys, you know, riding the dinos typically can't afford the baggers. That's fair. I uh, just, I just don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's that much of a percentage of it to call it the poor man's performance bagger. No, because the, the maybe, dyna, maybe that's an area thing. performance diners performance dinas were around way quicker than the performance baggers were. I think the performance baggers is coming from those who graduated from the performance uh, dinas <laughs> and can now afford to do it to a performance bagger. It's kind of that next step. They yeah. went to the dyna that wasn't designed to do that. Now that's like, oh, let's see how far we can push this. Yeah. I don't know. I, oh, boy. I feel like Ken has something to say. <laughs> no, I'm just really enjoying this back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I I never liked the dinas. I, I thought they were sports with a big motor and a six gear. Yeah. Uh, but you're also like 6'4", so I mean... Six three, but yeah, to that point, I don't fit yeah. on a Dyna very well, and hell, I don't yeah. fit on most soft tails very well either. When I rode your Dyna, with the exception of them being mids, if that if I'd have had more forward controls on there, it'd have been a comfortable bike. Comfortable, but definitely doesn't equal to a bagger. No, no. you still look like you're riding a two fifty Kawasaki, and, and I, well, I also weighed a lot more than two. True, like shit a lot more a lot that, like that video was plus a while pounds, ago, yeah. yeah that was before the wrap even yeah I, that, that you still had, you had wrap. still had stock bars in there you'd only change the seat no i had the bars on i don't think i had the fairing on yet though no but it's been a while yeah it's been a hot minute yeah i i think back to the sportster thing what people are doing as far as customizing the dinas it's catching up to where the sportsters kind of are yeah not to the same extent but i think they're doing some really cool stuff but i'm so fucking tired of seeing the same damn fairing and the stupid ass t-bars yeah 
Yep. I'm sorry. It just it looks it looks like everything else that's out there. It's like a Mustang. They either have one of three exhaust systems. They all sound the they fucking sound same. Exactly the same. And they all look the same. No one's doing anything custom. It's like a Honda Civic. Oh, I got a cost, uh, Honda Civic. So I want to be unique. It's no. the number one selling car out there. How is that being unique? Yeah. So I don't you're know. unique, just like everyone else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, no, I, I agree to a point. I mean, I, I don't think it's quite played out yet but i do think that it has peaked and that was partly one of the reasons why i got out when i did yeah my my other issue right now I hope is the resurgence of the fxr oh yeah jesus christ i mean look i get it it was a cool bike 35 years ago but today let it die yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's a turd yeah no matter how much you polish it it's still shit you might be able to get it up to like a kind of on the heels of the Dyna, but mm. that's about it. I yeah. don't know. There, there's a reason they killed that model line off. Yeah. And it must be storming because we have puppies entering the room. Hi, Tina. She's like, I'm not having this. <laughs> uh, so, okay, moving on. Uh, but I think that stereotype is part one of the two Dyna stereotypes, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know uh, I had to throw this one in there. <laughs> yeah. Number five and our final one for this episode on the stereotypes. Harley motorcycles are unreliable. I don't think that could be any farther from the truth. Is it, is this 40 years ago? <laughs> I mean, that's well, that's where it stemmed from. I'll tell you. It's ever since 2004, this has not been accurate. Oh, so yeah. all the bikes that you've owned since 2004, name everything that's gone wrong with them. Well, I have to be fair about this. Okay. I have not had a bike go bad on me for something I didn't cause. Fair. So my soft tail standard is a 2004 and I had the fuel injected model. Never had an issue with it until I started fucking with it. Okay. All the road glides, all the road king or the road king, all Tracy stuff no issues that wasn't caused by us yeah well so was so were these did these make it past the first or second oil change <laughs> you're a fucking dick <laughs> first yes second no because that's he would have answered the question if it did. so <laughs> the soft tail had eighty three thousand miles on it he bought it with eighty one thousand. i yep. bought it brand new <laughs> the my first road glide i traded in at forty eight thousand miles after owning it for two years bought it with 44 bought it brand new <laughs> uh now the 2011 i i think i traded that one in with like eleven thousand miles and yes all the other bikes didn't make it past the 5k yeah sounds about right all right ken this is your one and only harley right yes and nothing that i can think of nope did you have any recalls yeah no yes oh the abs abs the, no, yours was before. It was no, you don't have ABS. It was clutch, 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 clutch. Oh yeah, yours does have the hydraulic clutch. Yeah, the no, clutch. I don't have ABS, but it was an issue with the hydraulic yeah, clutch. The clutch. Yeah. Which I, I'll say that with the same thing I say about every recalls. Shit happens. It's first off, shit happens, and two, it's more of a cover your fucking ass more than anything. Oh, I, I did have, I did have an oil leak. When? So it came back from service, and that was a service issue not a motorcycle issue <laughs> and so i noticed that uh for whatever reason uh i had oil leaking from my uh, rocker box cover hmm. and i took it in and they tightened it <laughs> and <laughs> no more of an issue no more issues huh they were like yeah it was loose You're my, the the bolts were loose <laughs> so wow. you can't say that that's Oh, that's still, not a de- that's still can't say that that's a defective issue. That's just no. a fucking bolt was loose. <laughs> All right, before we continue, let's take a minute to hear from our sponsors. Hey, folks, we have partnered with Get Lowered Cycles to give the Between Two Worlds listeners something extra. When you spend $100 or more, Get Lowered will hook you up with a free Get Lowered t-shirt. All you have to do is head over to getlowered.com, choose the parts and gear you need, and when you check out, use the coupon code B2WPODCAST and put your shirt size in the notes section. 
And we're back. Okay, so let's continue with the Harley reliability stereotype. Yeah. It is accurate when Harley Davidson was owned by AMF and a couple years after they were bought back out. Yeah. I would say that was a very accurate situation. Yeah. Well, and, and the whole Harley's leak oil, that was actually designed into the motorcycle from what I understand and the research that I've done. Huh. Yeah. Is it when it got overpressurized or? If you put too much oil in there. Gotcha. Uh, well, that the blowback is built in. Yeah. So when it's still it, built in. And it's yeah. still built it's in. It's still built that way. So if, if you're running too much oil. It has a place for it to spit it out. Or if you're running it too hot. Yeah. And too hot. And if you don't have a clean you know, air filter, it's got nowhere to go. Yeah. Yep. So, but it, it spits it back into the motor. The motor. The motor. Yeah. Which for this type of motor, it's it's Completely engineered for fine. that. Yes, it's built that way. Yeah. But yeah, you start seeing like I had this issue again, my fault, where the oil would it, the the filter wasn't clean, yeah. and the oil would then build up in the filter and then start dripping, yep. and then my exhaust system would get all oilified. Yep. So yeah, but again, my fault. Yeah. So, I would say this stereotype does not exist for our generation and no. and anyone coming after our generation. I yeah. would say the only part that it has some sort of truth is that their batteries are garbage from the factory. Unless you take care of them. But, you, yeah, granted, you did get a lot out of yours. But I, I took care of mine probably about 70 percent, and I still only got about a year out of it. Yeah. But they just released their new lithium-ion, which, first off, is stupid stupid fucking light yeah i picked it up at the dealership holy crap what a difference now did you have to change anything of your i didn't system? get it i just oh okay. i just picked it up it's like four hundred dollars yeah. so i said fuck that you got that youtube money so i do not <laughs> youtube millionaire <laughs> yep which means nothing yeah which means <laughs> i'm not even gonna get into it <laughs> all right so the closing argument man you're doing another one on the fly huh oh yeah oh yeah fuck I don't like these. <laughs> <laughs> In your opinion, does the stereotype of the old grouchy Harley rider still exist today in the sub 50 year olds? Ooh, sub 50. Sub 50, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I mean, man. I have met some people, mm-hmm. uh, but to me it really comes off as uh, I'm really trying to make daddy proud <laughs> okay I'm trying to be tough trying to be tough it, yep. it they're seems, trying to live into that it, quote unquote biker life they're style. trying to put that image out there mm-hmm. they're, they're, it's they're all posers. a show it's a show yeah posers yep. yeah it's all a show yeah there's there's been one that I can think of off the top of my head that we were like in a parking lot and this person like backed up and got close to them. He's like, oh, I'm gonna go have a word with them, and then nothing came from it. So and then Ken got off his bike. And the guy's like, oh, fuck that. Oh, <laughs> oh I forgot to tell you all this story earlier this week. Oh it'd boy, be great story for, time. Sorry, it'll, it'll be great for the podcast. So <laughs> it, whenever I see a motorcycle, fuck your closing argument. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, well, see, it comes into this. Okay. Okay. Into this kind of. So. Whenever I see a motorcycle, I always go and put a card in there. I leave it on the seat, leave it on your helmet. I don't mess with your bike. I just leave one of our cards. Uh huh. Hey, you gotta advertise somehow. Sure. So I go over and I stick it you know, on the seat where the uh, backrest would go. And it was a, uh, it was an older sportster. Well, it was a beat up looking sportster. Wait, is and, this Tyler? Yeah. You, no. <laughs> no, because it was on the road. <laughs> no. Yeah. Those was at Home Depot. Okay. Over in my neck of the woods. I go over there and literally I'd walk over put the card in there, make sure it stays, and I'll walk away. Well, this guy, out of nowhere, he's like, hey, get away from my fucking bike. I've already started to walk away, mind you. <laughs> and I turn around, and I'm like, what? Because now I'm immediately on guard and kind of pissed. And he's like, stay the fuck away from my bike. And he starts making his way over to me. He's like, what are you doing? What would you put on my bike? And I was like, hey, I left you a card for our podcast. You know, run a motorcycle podcast, me and two buddies. And, you know, give him a little spiel like I always do. And he's like, I don't fucking care what you're doing. Don't touch my bike. And I was like, why don't you go to our website? And there's a link where you can contact us. So if you get an email from some angry, pissed off guy. <laughs> we get to read it live on Oh, yeah. Air. Oh, yeah. I hope this guy That's why. Because I told him, well, go leave, go leave me a fucking email. 
<laughs> and my boss will get it. <laughs> And, and that fucking, is exactly I why I don't leave shit on bikes. That right there. <laughs> but it's not like I fucking... No, I get it. I, just, I walked over and I set the card in there and yeah. that was it. No, I get it. But I know that there's people like that out there. I just don't want to fucking deal with it. Yeah. He's lucky he didn't get fucking pepper sprayed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so. if he'd have wanted to fight, we, we could have fought. <laughs> so I don't want to fight, but I ain't scared to bleed. So <laughs> The machismo of being a Harley biker is in my oh, opinion yeah. still there yeah oh yeah and i mean he, this was a young, younger guy too he was probably in his 20s mid 20s or so really yeah and he just well, went up to you like that mid 20s on mid-20s, a sportster older, you think he's been older, older, than older fuckers that still ride sportsters so oh, yeah but yeah. they're doing especially it. if it's ratted out yeah so for me i've i've seen it as recent as a couple weeks ago this guy thinking he's hard ass and he was just talking shit. And I was like, Oh, what do you, what do you ride? He's like, I have a Dyna. I was like, ah, uh-huh, I, I, that explains I, it. I gotcha. Dyna bros. And he was like, well, what does that mean? What do you fucking ride? I was like, I, I have a rogue glide. It's nothing. And he was like, well, that's a badass bike. He's like, Oh, I know. And yours isn't. <laughs> and I don't have to be a prick about it. <laughs> I was like, I can show up and people know, Oh, he's got a, a road glide. I don't have to show up and let everyone know I have a fucking. I've dyna. got a dyna. No, it's a dyna. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, it's I'm not finally, a soft tail. I'm finally getting to see what you guys really thought about my bike. Just, just kept it quiet. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like, fuck. What do they think about my bike now? <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I think the stereotype unfortunately still exists. Yeah, I agree. And I, I hope people take from this podcast that yes. All three of us have a Harley slant, but we talk shit about Harley. And I think we we hold them to a higher standard. Oh, absolutely. Than we hold everyone else. But we love motorcycles. It doesn't matter what the fuck you ride, as long as you're out there riding. So that that's what our message has always been: get out and ride. I don't care what brand, what style. Just go out and ride. Unless. It's a fucking slingshot. <laughs> that's not a motorcycle. It's not riding. Fucking that's driving. <laughs> You're not a bike. That's what that was kind of my point. Of my started my channel too is to prove that not all Harley riders are assholes. Just most of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's go ahead and end it here. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com the two is spelled out T-W-O on behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying be yourself unless you're a jerk then be someone better peace Uh, uh, uh,